Hello everybody, thank you for watching for this video. I'm gonna recap last week's trading uh, activity. And uh, originally I meant to uh, make these videos for the uh, Patreon supporters, which I, I kinda still uh, am gonna do, but for some reason I felt like I wanted to share with more people uh, because I know that not everybody's gonna sit through the uh, live streams. So uh, what I decided to do is I'm still gonna put it on YouTube, but I'm gonna delay it by a week. So if you're a Patreon supporter, you'll be uh, the first one to get it on the Saturday following the uh, closing market. I'm gonna try to get a little tighter, so maybe I can do it on Fridays, but most likely it's gonna be Saturdays, just because I wanna make sure that I cover the right information and I don't wanna really leave anything out, especially all the important stuff where we're learning lessons and uh, trying to uh, develop some kind, of, some kind of a strategy. So I hope you guys are looking forward to these videos, but without any further ado, let's get into the video. I'm gonna start out with Monday, May 18th. Okay, so as you can see here on Monday, I started out with the Bank of America. Uh, I went in at 22.50 uh, and I ended up losing, cut my losses at 22.30. Uh, biggest problem with that one is that I was chasing the stock. I was chasing the play. So as you can see right here, uh, let's see if I can zoom in a little bit more. Uh, when the market opened and started kind of shooting up and instead of being patient, I tried to catch it on the uptrend, which is a very, very bad mistake. You do not want to do that. Uh, I knew that even then, for some reason, emotional. I don't know. I don't know why I did it, but I definitely am trying to avoid doing that. Uh, but as you can see, I caught it as it was moving up, and instead of uh, cutting my losses immediately when it started slowing down, I allowed it to go uh, further down, especially when it broke through this support right here. That should have been my first signal to sell. I didn't allow allowed it to try to recover it. After it recovered, maybe I thought it was gonna keep going, so I just held it for another big drop and I just cut my losses right here. So as you can see, I waited for two recoveries before I cut my losses. I should've just cut it as soon as it dropped because it would've still been higher than waiting for this recovery and I would've had the time to go and put money in something else. And so just keep that in mind, do not chase a plate. Even if you do that, if you make the mistake of doing that, as soon as it slows down, just get rid of it. You don't know what's gonna happen, so just try to avoid the situation altogether right here. All right, so as you can see, I came back to the uh, same stock twice on that day. And so what happened is I saw it kind of bottom out and uh, it started doing new high. So this is a higher high right here. And then it didn't drop below the previous low, so that's a higher low. So I decided to get in right before it broke to that resistance. Uh, luckily, it did break through and it started uh, gaining. And so I just kind of followed it. I waited to see if it would break, break the previous support. It didn't. So I just kept holding on to it. And then it started slowing down here. So I sold it, uh, but then it continued to go up and I missed this uh, small break. So I got in it again and just kind of watched it. Uh, like I said, you can tell it started slowing down. It started kind of plateauing. And so just out of, uh, you know, convenience and not wanting to hold it too much longer I sold it here before it continued to shoot up throughout the day but again uh, this doesn't bother me because I don't want to be in front of the screen for uh, too long two three hours maybe even four but uh, not too much uh, longer than that um, I'm not trying to get rich quick I'm trying to learn this system and uh, make it so that it's something that is uh, practical something that i can do being here in hawaii and markets uh, opening at 3 30 uh, could be a disadvantage but at the same time if i'm up at 3 30 do trades for three hours that's 6 30 that's still pretty early in the day that i can go out and do stuff maybe shoot weddings and you know play with the kids or something you can look at it in both ways disadvantages and advantages i just gotta be able to go to sleep early enough to wake up uh, for that okay so let's move to the next uh, trade which was uh uh, FSCT for Scout Technologies. So I try to highlight anything that I lose more than 2% uh, and uh, anything higher than 4%. So that that's going to be my risk reward ratio for now. So that one again was a loss. I chased it again. It was another mistake. I caught it right at the very top. There was really no good place to get out. And as you can see, just as fast as it went up, it went down and I just cut my losses right here, uh, which is a good thing because it continued to drop. Later on in the day, just like I did with Bank of America, I went back into it after I saw, saw it uh, bottom out, higher high, higher low. Uh, the problem is that, see this right here, this struggle to go higher, and I still got in thinking maybe it'll break through on the next one, but it just continued to fall. So I was actually negative for a little while before it broke out, and instead of selling when it slowed down up here for a gain, 
for a higher gain i just kind of watch this slowly uh drop down which uh yeah it's not the best strategy right so i knew i was wrong here as soon as it started dropping see this is the previous support so even if i was playing it safe i could have still sold it when it dropped here but i didn't i waited and allowed it to drop even further i had a plan it didn't work out i should have cut losses i didn't which could have been potentially good but i allowed it to get bad make sure you watch out for that Okay, the next one was SQQQQ, which is uh, uh, ETF. So as you can see, I got in it twice. I lost twice. This one, I tried to chase it. Uh, I was hoping it was going to break out here. It didn't. I got in and it continued to drop. Uh, and so I ended up cutting losses here. It went up again, chased it. I got in at the top again, and then it dropped. Things like this are going to happen, but to let it happen back to back like that, it just uh, doesn't make sense. Uh, again, it was I was chasing this this rise right here. I should have just let it settle. I could have let it play it out a little bit longer. The only thing I'm glad about is that I didn't allow it to get all the way uh, down here. There was plenty of spots where I could have gotten out early, but I didn't, so that's how it worked out. Okay, there was one more on Monday that I got into, and then that was the SRNE. I was green on that one, but not by much. The support was here, and then I got in a little bit earlier. And then it went up, it went back down. I think by this time I was already kind of done with it. So I decided to just sell it just to get out of it while I was still green. It did go up a little bit after that. Not too much more though. And it just uh, dropped uh, for the rest of the day after that. Okay, so for Tuesday, I was, I was focused on not getting in too soon on a trade. I was trying to let the, the price settle down because in the morning, remember, it's very active. I did okay on Tuesday. I had one big play that, uh, that I was able to I take advantage off but for the other ones they weren't they were okay they were just average so this one right here so as you can see i got in at 253 got out at 233 for a loss this one i thought it was gonna keep going i mistook this part for a higher low which it wasn't it was just a side movement the uh, low was actually over here so i got in a little bit too high and then just uh, instead of getting out when i broke even or I just went up a little bit because you know hindsight is 2020 right so i'm assuming right here i'm thinking okay it might potentially keep going but as soon as i had that big drop i should have just sold so i can get off our loss here but it's really hard to admit to a loss so that's probably uh something that i need to work on and then i just watched it and held it too long so uh, on monday the pattern was uh trying to chase the price which is a no-go and on Tuesday, it looked like it started developing and a little bit on Monday that I was holding way too long. And so I allowed it to get way down here. I lost $1.60 for that one, which isn't a lot, but you're looking at uh, eight, almost 8% 8 just on that one play. And so the next one we're looking at is an NDM. And so that one, that was a big play. Uh, I mean, it could have been massive, like massive, massive. I was watching it, it kept going higher and higher. I saw a, a higher low, a higher high. So I got in right when it bounced. It was a perfect entry. And then I, it continued to go high, but then it slowed down. So I just uh, grabbed my gains. So I got in at $1.31 and it hit 397 for the day. For the aftermarket, it hit six something. So it was pretty crazy. Obviously there was huge potentials there. I just didn't have the patience to, to wait through this low right here. You know, that's sometimes that's how, especially when I plan to only trade for two or three hours, that's gonna happen. It's probably gonna happen a lot. Okay, and then the next one was CLVS. I got in at 792, got out at 796. With this one, I saw head and shoulder. So you can see right here, shoulder, head, shoulder, and it met back down to the support. So I got in right when it started recovering and it recovered uh, a little bit, but again, I held it maybe a little too long. I was hoping it went higher, but thankfully I didn't hold it any longer because it was just continuing to drop after that. Uh, so I got what I could from that one. Uh, it wasn't too much though. So the last one for the day on Tuesday was another attempt at a swing trade. I went in at 136. And I just bought it late, hoping that it would uh, be higher on the next day. Uh, which it wasn't, as you can see, I ended up losing a dollar six cents, five point five percent of uh, what I got into it with, and um, yeah, so far I haven't really won on any swing, so I'm gonna try to limit those. Okay, so now we're looking at Wednesday. So obviously I sold that uh, swing for a loss, as I mentioned, and then we got this one, which is the big play of the day, big play of the week. I was up almost thirty percent with this one. Okay, so this was a really good play because I saw a bottom out. 
I saw higher highs. So I got in after I recovered once. I was a little, a little bit nervous because see this, this high here where the next high was lower. So it looked like it was gonna start consolidating, but I just kind of let it, let it play out and it broke here and it went to a higher a highs. And then this seemed a little too good to be true right here. See this big, huge jump right here. So I got rid of, uh, I think I, I came in with 17 shares at 120. And I got rid of 10 right here, just in case. I got rid of those 10. It reached a high of 177. I put an order of 170 and it hit right before it collapsed. In fact, this one got paused on the way up and it got paused on the way down. So it paused a few, a few times on this day. It had a big drop after it came back and recovered, uh, started going up, but then now another huge uh, drop. So it got paused again. And so on the next up, I just sold it. And so that's where I sold the last seven shares that I had. So this was the average price that I sold at. Uh, I decided to do a different system than this line here um, because it's confusing. But yeah, I was up uh, six dollars, uh, almost thirty percent. Obviously, if I would have sold all of it up here, I would have been up almost double that. But that's a good lesson learned right there. Okay, so I just realized that I left the same name on this one, CCCL, but it's actually supposed to be NNDM. Yeah, so I, I have the wrong graph on here, but I'm talking about this NNDM here. Went in at three seventy eight, uh, lost a uh, dollar fifty very quickly. And that's just because I was trying to chase the price from yesterday because remember, yes, the day before it hit a, a high of 390 after I went in at 130, I think. So I was trying to see if I can get lucky with that one. But it was, you know, when you when the price moves that fast on the uptrend, it's most likely going to move that fast on the downtrend. So uh, that was just a bad play right there. OK, so Thursday, I started with Macy's. I got in at 511, got out at 414. As you can see, I got in when it was recovering from a big bounce. It's probably a wrong place to get in because see how fast it was moving. If I would gotten in over here, OK, but I didn't. I got in somewhere over here and it just started downtrending. So I got rid of it really quick before it got too low. So I realized that it was kind of consolidating. It did break out later on. So I tried to get in it again while it was breaking out on the second leg right here. I did get back into it after it recovered a little bit. It hit a high, started slowing down. So I, I got rid of it as it was coming back down. And again, I got into it, but it was already too uh, lazy. I was already down trending. And so I just cut my losses here. So I got into this one three different times. Uh, two times I won and on the last one I pretty much lost all the gains because I got, I got greedy basically. So you can see on the first one I gained nine cents. 18 cents on the next one and then i lost 24 when i just allowed it to drop way too low i made that same mistake again with pixie kind of try to chase it a little bit i didn't chase it so at least i fixed the problem from monday but i didn't allow it to move enough and so i ended up buying on the high here and then as soon as it dropped i just cut losses and of course as it happened not too uh, much longer after that it broke out went higher than when i bought it but i was already out so nothing i could do about that okay bisl same thing as uh the one right before that it broke out it recovered i got in as it was recovering it didn't get too much higher after that and it just dropped and so i cut losses before it hit that huge drop over here and even though it recovered it never really hit higher than when I got into. So I'm just glad I left, I got out here on the first signs of uh, failure before it got way down here. And so that was VISL. So I lost 42 cents for that one, which is uh, over 2%. All right, so the next move was AVTR. Got in at 1697, got out at 1688 for a loss of 18 cents. I uh, only bought two shares of those. That's why it's uh, movement is not, not so much. And so you can see, this one looked promising. You know, it went up higher, it recovered. The problem is that I hold it way too long. So as you can see, it was higher and then it went down, touched the support. It went higher, but it didn't reach, it barely reached that top. So I could, I should have sold somewhere over here or at least right when I, right after that big drop so I can break even, but I allowed it to kind of sizzle down. And then I ended up selling down here at the very bottom. It did recover, but it was way down, uh, down, the chain okay so lx is another one here on uh, thursday got in at 204 got out at 209 as you can see here kind of lingered for a while i got in i was red for most of the time went up to green it, you know i got up this high 
And uh, this was one of those that I was already off. I was already kind of, uh, I ended the stream. I got in it late, hoping uh, to catch the bottom. Uh, I was literally falling asleep right here. I kept waking up and I saw it I hit the highs up here. And for some whatever reason, maybe I was too tired. I, I, I didn't act and I just watched kind of, you know, on and off go down and I sold it here. I made another mistake on the very next move again for the dip this was um ark which i cover on the next day but you can see it right here i bought it thinking it was going to be the dip so i bought it here and then it dropped and biggest mistake i made the whole week uh again this the stream was off for this one already uh this was towards the midday uh, i got in it again for the same amount so it's not even like i was doing ten dollars and ten dollars i did 20 then I saw it drop and fears of uh, having a big loss. I put another 20 in there. So now I'm in it for 200 shares. I saw it dip down. I still refused to sell. I saw it recover, but it didn't hit uh, my previous uh, entry. And so I just, you know, I just said, I forgot about it, turned it off. And I figured, okay, I'll deal with it tomorrow. Or well, the next day, it didn't do any better. Uh, it never really reached the top. Uh, of my average and so I got out of it when it was had a I think I was down six dollars over here so I, I just continued to watch it go up and down up and down and I just got out at five dollars uh, loss if it wasn't for this loss which is again this one's carried over to Friday uh, Friday I actually had a pretty decent day especially with one particular uh, stock so you can, you can see Jern here it's the first one that I got into the day and so I had a big spike right here. I saw it come back down. I saw it recover, so I got in. You can see at the very top here, that was a perfect exit. I went in with 13 shares, like sold seven here. Watched it go down, and then right after I broke, another, I sold another six. Obviously, I didn't know it was gonna keep going. And so I sold the other six, it kept going. I got into it again later on um, when I saw it kind of uh, hit a top and then a bottom. I got in, it broke out immediately, so I cut losses quick. I got in again, I had a big drop because I didn't let it settle. Uh, had a big drop, I was red for a little bit. I start, it started recovering, it was a, I, I was definitely holding it too long. Um, and then I should have sold as I saw it slow down, but I didn't, uh, I, held, I kept holding on to it. I still ended up green with this one, but I definitely held it too long. And then I got into it again, it dropped. I was red again immediately after I got in. Uh, I was definitely paying attention throughout this uh, time right here. And then it recovered and I just saw the signs of slowing down happen. And so I was green on one, two, three, four, five, five out of five with a journey. And that was just because it was continuing to move up. I try to use the same strategy for uh, this one right here, the TTPH. I bought seven, I sold half when it was at a peak. But then I, the problem with this one is that I held too long. I should have dumped the other shares here. I just held it, try to hope for recovery. It continued to drop. So I let these two drops get in the way and I ended up getting out over here for a loss. So I gained 44 cents on four shares, but lost 78 cents on three which is almost 9%. And so obviously I was overall uh, red on that one. And then Nav B, that's another one that I played a couple of times. The first one I lost. So I came in here, as you can see, it looked, it was on an overall downtrend. It looked like it might recover, but I made the mistake uh, that I made earlier where I assumed this was, uh, this was a bottom, but it was actually side movement. So I got in right here, it, it dropped. I got out over here for a loss. And then I saw a bottom out twice, started recovering. So I got in, which ended up being the exact same price as the previous time. And it turned out to be the top. So I saw it come back down again. So you see these two big two drops and it recovered and down and recovered and down and recovered. And I just watched it very slowly, very tedious. And as soon as it uh, looked like it was going to slow down, I sold and it broke a couple, uh, one more time after that. And then it was just downhill for the rest of the day. And so that was it. That was the last uh, trade of the week. As you can see, uh, there was a lot of trades. Um, a lot of, uh, they were all at least $20, uh, $20 minimum. Basically is what I'm working on right now for this week. Next week's gonna be 30, even though Monday is closed. 
And as you can see, let me show you the, uh, the review for the week. So that's from the 18th. So I started out down $3 something cents. And then I uh, went red on the first day, green on the next two days. Uh, again, Wednesday was a big day. And then uh, if it wasn't for Friday, uh, Thursday's mistake, Friday would have been green. Uh, but that's a lesson learned. And so that's the week, guys. Let me know what you think. I felt like uh, this video was dragging a little bit, so maybe there's a better format that I can use to give you guys this information. If you can think of any advice or something that I can do maybe with my voice or uh, just the information in, all, in uh, general, uh, leave it on the comment section below. I really appreciate you guys watching. If you like this video, hit that like button. If you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel. You can obviously see that there's a shift in my channel towards finance a little bit more uh, just because we're stuck at home and there's really not much that I can do as far as travel. I can probably do more keto videos, but I haven't really been uh, putting the effort in. And so uh, let me know what you guys want to see. I, uh, I don't want to lose you guys, uh, though, at least the ones that are here for the keto stuff. And uh, you know, I want to give you the ones that are here for the financial uh, side of it, uh, more useful information. But this is an experiment of mine try and learn how to day trade and all that. I know that a lot of it is a gamble if I don't, you know, attempt to get good at it. And so, yeah, I just want to kind of hear your thoughts. Let me know in the comment section below. I appreciate you guys watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.